We are first introduced to Dante Bishop on March 21st, 2022 in Southern California. He's homeless, and he's being stalked by a group of purgers who describe themselves as fine, young, very educated guys and gals. They wear creepy brown masks and fancy clothes. It's not known why they target him, but it's entirely possible that being homeless, he thought he'd fare better hiding in an upscale residential neighborhood whose residents are less likely to be on the streets for their purge than those in the inner city. But his assumption was sadly mistaken when he encountered their group, and just happened to be the first homeless person they came across. They have a mission to take out the homeless in the lower class because wiping out that demographic means paying less on taxes that support things like food stamps and homeless shelters. It's clear, based on the way they talk about him, that they look down on the homeless. The man you're sheltering is nothing but a dirty homeless pig, a grotesque menace to our just society who had the audacity to fight back. So when the group encounters Dante, they see that he's homeless and they go after him. But things don't go as expected. To learn about how Dante's experiences that night were instrumental in putting a stop to the purge once and for all, stick around to the end of this video. Welcome to Horror History. Today's episode will break down one of the most unlikely characters to become a hero in the world of The Purge. When he was first introduced, Edwin Hodge's character only spoke on maybe four separate occasions and was known in the credits simply as Bloody Stranger. Then in Anarchy, he makes a small appearance, but this time he isn't bloody, so he's just credited as The Stranger. It isn't until the third movie that we learn who he is and how his experiences changed history. So to understand his story, let's take it back to just before he shows up for the first time in the series. Surrounded by this strange group of gussied up purge participants, he surprises them by fighting back. He probably did this with the knife that he had with him, and he actually manages to purge one of them. After doing this, he runs for it. I imagine the purgers were too busy tending to their friends to bother going after him right away, but they would soon follow him with revenge in mind. Dante runs down the street in a gated residential community and tries to call out for help to the local residents. His prayers are answered when the Sandin household lifts their security and a young boy yells out to him. He makes a sprint for it and manages to slide under the closing door just in time. He may be safe from his original attackers, however, for all he knows, the Sandin family is also looking to purge him. They have blue Batesias outside, a sign that they support the purge, but not necessarily a sign that they participate in the purge themselves. Taking shelter is Dante's best bet, but he still has to stay on his toes. It quickly becomes apparent that this kid was the only one reason that he was let inside, when the parents emerge in a state of anger and confusion. The dad slowly draws his gun on Dante, but his focus is diverted when a young man on the stairs opens fire on Mr. Sandin. The distraction gives Dante a chance to escape and hide in the house. He's probably planning on trying to avoid the family until the purge ended the next morning, but he realizes the family isn't his only concern when the power is cut in the entire house. As he's searching for a spot, he nearly gets caught when Mr. Sandin shines a flashlight on him with his gun drawn. The darkness works to Dante's advantage here, and he's able to disappear once more. He ducks out behind a couch in a living room when he's approached by a strange strange drone shaped like a creepy deformed baby doll. When it spots him, nobody comes running to his location to capture him, so he's intrigued by what its purpose is and decides to follow it, perhaps thinking it was being controlled by the boy that let him inside. If that was his logic, he would have been correct. It leads him to a closet where he discovers a hidden area covered up by a panel, and he takes refuge there just before Mrs. Sandin enters the room. She searches the closet, and he readies his knife, but ultimately is not discovered. That doesn't last long, however, because the Sandin's daughter, Zoe, also tries to hide there. and not not wanting to kill anyone, Dante has no choice but to take her hostage. The threat doesn't really work out for him though, because he was never going to shoot Zoe. He's not violent by nature, and killing her wouldn't get him anywhere. In a standoff with Mr. Sandin, he explains that he doesn't want to hurt any of them, but he deserves to survive the night just as much as they do. He finds out that the purge group that he escaped from threatened the Sandins' lives if they don't turn him back over. Meanwhile, Mrs. Sandin sneaks up behind him, and he has to abandon his plan. He throws Zoe into the wall and tries to run for it, but he's brought down by Mr. Sandin. He flails and struggles but is forced to cooperate when Mr. Sandin restrains him and his wife brutally cuts into his wound with a letter opener. Dante is duct taped to a chair where he sees how much turmoil he's causing the family and concedes his struggle. Save your children. Take me outside. It is perhaps this humility that causes Mr. Sandin to decide that he's had enough of being pushed around by the purgers outside the house. He leaves Dante in restraints upstairs unsupervised, giving him time to wiggle out and free himself. Once again, he hides somewhere in the house as he hears the Sandin family fight for their lives and his own. 
At some point, he must have felt guilty for hiding while the man who risked everything for him, a stranger, was being massacred downstairs, and he decides that he's going to return the favor. The other neighbors take care of the threat of the mass purge group, but only because they want to take the Sandins out themselves. Dante finds himself a weapon, and the controller for the creepy baby drone. And just as the neighbors are about to sacrifice the family, he runs the RC vehicle across the foyer to distract everyone, allowing him to get into position and go to town on the neighbors, knocking the first one out with his fist, taking out another with his gun, and grabbing the woman, Grace as a hostage. He forces the remaining neighbors to drop their weapons and untie the remainder of the family, but once they're safe, he refuses to engage in any more violence. He watches over everyone as they sit at the kitchen table and wait for the purge to expire. After the siren sound, Dante is the last to leave. He places the gun on the table, and when Mary thanks him for saving them, all he can muster is... The psychological damage of the horrors he experienced that night would change the course of the rest of Dante's life. He had seen firsthand what the Purge was doing to his country, and his new mission would be to put a stop to it. Sometime over the next year, he joins an anti-Purge revolutionary group headed up by a man named Carmelo Johns. Carmelo's thesis is that the Purge is a tool to funnel wealth upward to the NFFA political party through killing. He aims to educate people about that and protect those who would be victims. This makes a perfect organization for Dante to be a part of, given that his lack of wealth in 2020 22 gave him no way to protect himself, and that nearly resulted in him being purged. This year, we will fight back! During the 2023 purge, Carmelo's group hacks into the NFFA countdown stream at the six hour mark and issues a propaganda warning, claiming that their message will be written in the blood of their opponents. This shows us that Dante's views have changed since the previous year, when he was only willing to engage in violence for survival purposes. This year, he'd be coming fully armed. The anti-NFFA revolutionary group led by Carmelo John spends their 2023 purge trying to find and break up an NFFA purge night gala, where rich political donors have the option to buy into a controlled environment where they can shoot down unarmed victims for sports. Dante is a part of this mission, which requires him to break one of the few laws upheld during the purge, using class 5 weapons and above, in this case explosives that help them gain entry to the building. Dante leads the way, striking down the NFFA security guards and announcing to the victims that they're here to help and that they should hold their fire. He's also the first one to reach them and explain who they are and what they're doing there. Who the f are you? Nobody special. Just some people who don't necessarily agree with the purge is all. He recommends that they get out before things get nasty, and Carmelo's group forms a line and combs the room, taking out everyone associated with the NFFA. Since Dante's identity was not covered, it's likely that he had to go into hiding to avoid being arrested for his use of high-class explosives. It may also be possible that it was too dark in there for any cameras to pick up his identity, or that he actually was prosecuted for the illegal use of explosives but was eventually released from prison. However, I find that idea pretty unlikely based on the fact that in the world of the Purge, trespassing after the siren sound gets you the death penalty so it's pretty hard to imagine the penalty for using illegal weapons would be any less. It's not known what happened to Carmelo Johns, but at some point, Bishop assumes leadership of the anti-NFFA militia and brings on a man named Angel to be his second-in-command. During his time in charge of the organization, he sets up a series of underground triage centers staffed with doctors and medical supplies meant as an alternate form of protest against what goes on during the purge. He also invites the homeless to take shelter there, likely in honor of Charlie Sandin, who offered him shelter when he was on the streets. 17 years after breaking up the gala, Dante finds himself in Washington, D.C. at the heart of a protest against the Purge in the year 2040. The NFFA this year is facing the greatest threat to the Purge yet, because a new political candidate named Charlie Roan has gained enough popularity to threaten the NFFA's regime. That's why Dante has taken his talents to the nation's capital, where he gives a statement on the 11 o'clock news. For the past 20 years, the NFFA has taken a legalized murder to decrease the poor population, which in turn keeps the government spending down. Less welfare, less health care, less housing. Feeling threatened by Senator Roan, the NFFA institutes a new law that removes the exemption for high-ranking government officials. Just as Dante once tried to use the Sandin family's own weapons against them, he sees this as an opportunity to take out the NFFA's next presidential candidate, Edward Jones. He watches a presidential debate where he learns that Owens will be spending this year's purge at a part religious cult, part political cult ceremony called the Midnight Purge Mass, and Bishop and his team of revolutionaries plan to break in and assassinate him, ensuring Roan the presidential victory. NFFA has created predatory capitalism where profit-making is the essence of democracy. 
Come to DC to make some changes. On Purge Night, Bishop's base of operations is one of the underground triage centers, which is supposed to be secure because only the triage van drivers know its location. Call this a safe zone. Bishop gets word that an attempt was made on Senator Roan's life and that she'll be taking refuge in his safe zone. He shows her around and helps her get settled in and vows to use his armed men to keep her safe. She does thank him for his protection, but also confronts him about some of the tactics he employs on Purge Night that she doesn't agree with. She's probably referring to the group's tendency to fight violence with violence. He tells her that if she gets elected and puts an end to Purge Night, he won't have to do those things anymore. However, he's not planning on leaving the results of that election up to chance. This plan gets exposed when Senator Roan's private security detail, Leo Barnes, one of the men that Bishop saved in 2023, goes behind closed doors and discovers their plot to take down Edward Jones. Roan vehemently objects, claiming that her opponent must survive to lose the election, otherwise he may become a martyr and risk further civil retaliation. NFFA soldiers discover and storm the safe zone looking for Dante, but he's already gone when they arrive. He and his men are infiltrating a secret underground tunnel into the cathedral where Owens' midnight purge mass is being held. They encounter an unexpected ally. It's Leo Barnes, the man in charge of keeping Senator Roan alive. He explains that she's been kidnapped by the NFFA and that this is now a rescue mission. Barnes and his allies join Dante's team in the invasion. They split up so that Barnes takes the vantage point of the balcony, and Bishop and his men enter from behind the altar. Barnes' people are able to get off the perfect shot to save the senator, but they're countered by a wave of Secret Service agents, which Dante and his people catch by surprise by coming up behind them. It looks as if he may have remembered something he learned 18 years ago at the Sandin House. His troops also capture Minister Owens, and Roan begs him to reconsider taking out her political rival. I can win without this, please. You will win. I'm gonna make sure that happens. When she tries to say that going through with it will make him no different than the NFFA, he tells his people to seize her, which leads to a standoff between Barnes and Bishop. He brushes her off and goes into the room where Owens is being kept. At this point, the minister is encouraging and begging him to purge him, knowing that the political ripple effect of his death would benefit the NFFA. Dante finds himself on the other end of the situation that he was in in 2022. And like his captor, Mr. Sandin, Dante makes the decision not to use violence to lower himself to the level of the purgers. And his parting words to Roan are that she better win that election. They continue on to the next chamber, where Owens has dozens of prisoners who would have been purged if Midnight Purge Mass had not been broken up. But Bishop is more concerned with leading the charge out of the church to get Roan to safety. They make it to the parking lot, where they come up against a group of mercenaries, led by the neo-Nazi NFFA henchman Earl Danzinger. Danzinger's squad completely overpowers them in terms of firepower. He has several men firing away big automatic weapons. They take out two of Dante's top guys and shoot him in the hand. Leo comes to his aid, and Dante asks him to cover him while he tries one last move. He hotwires a car and floors it across the garage to take out two of the evil mercenaries, but as soon as he does so, he is shot dead by Danzinger. It is likely that without Dante Bishop's heroics, Leo and the others would have had no chance to defeat Danzinger, get Senator Roan and Edwidge Owens to safety, and ultimately, two months later, on May 26, defeat the NFFA in the presidential election, and finally put an end to the nationwide purge after at least 23 years. Was Dante Bishop perfect? Not by any means. Right when we first meet him, he's a killer, but we can see at the beginning it's only out of desperation to survive, and he does everything he can to avoid unnecessary death. That night, he takes one more life in order to save three innocent ones. However, he does let the experience shape him in a negative way. The following purge, he once again saves a group of people, but he allows Carmelo's vengeful ways to influence him, and he stays behind to do more fighting, rather than help the survivors get to safety. In the years that would follow, it's implied that he does a lot of good with his organization by helping the injured and the homeless, but he gets a mixed reputation based on how he goes about things. Also, I mean, we can't just look past the fact that he automatically knew how to hotwire a car. I mean, he's obviously up to some shady stuff. But overall, he did have good intentions, and he played a vital part in stopping the NFFA and the Purge. If he and Carmelo hadn't saved Leo Barnes in 2023, Leo never would have been there to protect Senator Roan in 2040. And if he hadn't sacrificed himself in 2040, who knows if she would have survived. Let me know in the comments if there are any other Purge characters you'd like to see covered here on Horror History, and if you love the Purge, I've got plenty more Purge videos on the way. So check out that playlist on the left, and and remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring the death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive. And just like The Purge, I recommend you stay home. But if you have to go out, wear a mask.